another authentically you imprint spotlight show here we are here we are thank you all for joining us we're so excited today we because super we, excited we have somebody here today that's been digging in doing the work <laughs> yes. i mean you all can hear of uh, uh, uh people like to make great names uh you know such as you when we get to talking y'all will know that um, the neighborhood that he comes from is the same neighborhood that Kevin Durant comes from. Okay. And we don't want to take nothing from Kevin Durant because he's been back to the neighborhood. He's doing his thing. But this man is in the neighborhood. Making it happen. Making it happen. You're not going to believe <laughs> what we got for you. Listen, oh, we wow. in 175 countries yes. around the world. And it'd be a good idea for you to see that even where you are, mm -hmm. there are things that you can glean from here. Absolutely. And you can definitely take it from there. So why don't you introduce we, who we got today? We are bringing to the Imprint Show the one and only Joseph Holmes. <laughs> Yay. Hey, Joe. Hey, thanks for having me. I am honored to be here. I appreciate all the love, all the kind words. I just appreciate it. Thank you for having me once again. You deserve that and more. And more. Listen, you are one of the heroes to us, you know? We really I do appreciate all that. All that you do, you know, and uh, it's just our privilege to be able to shine the light on you and the general's future charity. So, but before. Yeah, yeah. He, before he, we, he, got, he got some free time on his hands somewhere. <laughs> 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 uh, because uh, there's a new baby, from what I understand. We want to congratulate you. So right. we have a, a six-week-old. Her oh. name is she's six weeks. Her name is Yara Isabel Holmes. So we are so happy and just full of joy with her the new addition. So that means I got to get up like five o'clock to do my general future work early <laughs> in the morning. So I got to find a way to fit it in there, but. You know, we're just so happy. You know, obviously, my two boys, Joseph and Jackson, and my lovely wife, Lolita. Mm -hmm. so we're just yeah, one yeah. happy family. Just get ready. Them girls keep you busy all their life. Yes, oh, man. All yes. their life, they keep you busy. It is, it's going to be a whole interesting dynamic for you. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Having two boys yeah. up until now, and now we have this precious little girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely. So. Tonight, we are here because we want to hear all about the General's Future Charity. Tell us first about the name. Who are the Generals? Okay. And so with that, people always think it's a military background. No, it's, I, I haven't been in the military. The General came from, I was a basketball player, you know, former basketball player. And my coach used to always put all these responsibilities on of I need you to be the leader on and off the court. And so with that came a lot of responsibility. So if my roommate or anyone is late to practice, mm -hmm. it's my fault. It's not my roommate's fault. It's not my teammate's fault. So I had to come, I had to make sure I'm knocking on the doors in the dorm room. Hey, fellas, we got practice at 6 a.m. So we got to get there. So those leadership skills, um, Started way before that, but that was where the general came from. One of my college coaches nicknamed me the general, and I've been running with it from uh, there. Yeah. And so future came from we are trying to develop future leaders. Mm. So right. it's all about leadership skills. Um, so the generals, obviously leadership, but we're trying to develop um, future leaders as well with the children. Beautiful. Yeah, you I have – you really lived up to the name because yeah. uh, I, I can imagine with you doing this, it was not easy thing to do coming back to your community and uh, 
dealing with young people and older people, mm -hmm. dealing with pride issues and all these type of things. Mm -hmm. And I imagine first coming back, you know, like anything, people believe you have some type of agenda. You right. Know, other yeah. than Absolutely. Absolutely right. So let me give you a little history on the beginning of the General Street to Charity. So I'm an educator for 11 years in special education. So I was working in level five special education schools, um, high road school and pathway school. So I was a one-on-one -on -one community support specialist. So these kids are a step before Boys Village and Sheltonham. So they, you know, their next step is Upper Marlboro or Fed and stuff like that. So did not know that. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, it's a lot of stuff y'all gonna learn today. So I, I'm, I'm gonna be an open book today. I'm gonna be an open book. Educate us. Right, I'm gonna be an open book on Joe Holmes and the General Street Charity Act. So, um, 11 years as a special educator. So I work with more of behavior disabilities and emotional disability. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't know that that was my passion. It was just really working with these kids. So. I, they wouldn't come to the actual school building. So right. I would pick them up in my vehicle from their home, and we would do stuff in the community, local libraries, rec centers. I would teach all their subjects, um, life skills. So they were with me all day. If I'm going to look for an apartment, I'm taking them with me. That's a life skill. I'm going to get a uh, oil change. Taking them with me is a life skill. <laughs> um, so it was just a real unique program. Yeah. And I didn't know school was like that when I was coming up. Right. But um, it's a real unique program. So from there, my kids were fine with me from 8 to 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They were with me all day. Parents know they're safe. We're good. From 3 to 6. <laughs> yeah. They're getting locked up. Yeah. They're robbing stores. They, everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so the General's Future Charity Act, um, was basically developed for after-school programs yeah. for that unstructured time. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, most of their parents work in three jobs. They, they're not home at 3 o'clock. Yeah. That 3 to 6, they all over the place. Wow. So the last thing that they wanted to do when they got caught was to have that person call me. Call oh, your parents. Right? Because we talked about this all day long. This is like, <laughs> listen, I'm dropping you off. You know, your mom is at work. Go in the house, man. All right, Mr. Holmes, I got you. 20 minutes later, I'm like, I just dropped you off. How did this happen? Right. They're like, don't call Mr. Holmes. Call my mom, call anybody. <laughs> call everybody else. Don't call that guy. Right. Right. <laughs> because I held him accountable. It was, I mean, I held him accountable. I didn't tolerate that talking back to their parents. I didn't tolerate that stuff. Right. Um, and so from there, I was just like, I need to find some something for their unstructured time. Right. Mm -hmm. So the General's Future, I, I took them on a summer vocational program. So I just had to find work for them. My school was paying them. Uh -huh. I just had to find work. So I had a buddy of mine that had a landscaping business. Right. So I would drop them off to him in the morning from 8 to 12, and they would learn a skill. Uh -huh. My buddy wouldn't have to pay him, but he, uh, he paid him as well. Right. But it, it was just more of that teaching them, because they was all really hands-on. They're not you know, book kids and stuff like that. Uh -huh. It was more hands-on. Hands -on. So from there, um, I just realized that was, that was my calling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I met a guy named Mr. Gary Burke. Um, and he just passed away. May he rest in peace. Um it was a it was one of the hottest days probably ever. We had pulled up over in Woodmore. So I got two Southeast kids. Mm -hmm. And we pulled up in that neighborhood and they said, Mr. Holmes, man, they must be it must be NBA players over here. Rappers or drug dealers. Okay. Right. So at this point, I'm hearing it, but I'm like, mm. how do I respond to this? 
<laughs> but so, but God clearly he had me be quiet for a second. I didn't respond to him right away because right. I probably would have said the wrong thing right away. Right. So things just worked out, and so I was just like, nah, it's it's some nine to five people. It's some people that go to work that right. just you know, mm -hmm. this is what they do. They go to work. They got regular jobs just like us. So right. you can have this stuff. Yeah. So. God just opened up this door and had this stranger that I never met, Mr. Gary Burke. He comes out and was just like, hey, I'm Gary. Um, I'm like, I'm Joe. He was like, these are your kids? I said, no, these are my students. And so he was like, your students? So I was just like, yeah, we got a vocational program. They out here uh, trying to learn a trade and doing something positive. Yeah. So he was like, man, that's good. So from there, he left us alone, went back in the house. 20 minutes later, he came back out. He said, nah, man, I need to talk to you. So he was like, is this something different? So I said, um, well, I don't know, Mr. Burke. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm just here with my kids. Right. He said, man, tell me a little bit more about this program. Yeah. I said, because um, he never heard of a school like that. Right. And so he was just, I told him what we do. We do all community outreach stuff. I pour into these kids. And he said, man, you seem like you, I, I feel like it's more. Yeah. So I said, so he said, tell me a little bit more. What you trying to do? I said, well, I would like to own, you know, I would like to do some after school programs, do my basketball camps, do this, do that. Um, and just pour into these kids. He said, well, why don't you? I told him, I said, no, I don't know how to start a business. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yo, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. <laughs> I gave this man a whole like five year plan, and he said, "Man, you, this is the easy part of starting a business." This was Ju I will never forget it. This was June fifteenth, uh -huh. two thousand fourteen. Uh -huh. Wow. The reason why I know that date uh -huh. because June sixteenth, he was in my living room getting General Future started. Wow. wow. He came over and. Took his time to, to 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 show me how to get the business started. Yeah, mm. he was like, "Man, I'll be there tomorrow." I'm, I'm used to people lying to me. I'm just being honest. I'm used to people lying. Hey, Joe, man, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna look out for you. But this man said, "I will be there mm -hmm. tomorrow morning after you get done with these kids." And he helped me form the General Future Charity. Wow. 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 Listen. Absolutely love that. Listen, we got to take a commercial break and yeah. then we're going to be right back. Right back. What is it that inspires passion? That thing that keeps us from thinking that we know it all, but instead makes us say, I have to know more. What is it that makes us keep trying after we've fallen time and time again? It's the thing that makes us smile after we finally figured it out. When what used to be difficult is now second nature. It's the joy of knowing our hard work was not in vain, but instead has made us better as people. It's the beauty of learning. Wow, here we are, here we are. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Uh, you don't know what you're going to do, but if you listen to the voice of God, mm -hmm. uh, he will lead you even into the things that you fear doing. Yeah. You'd be surprised most young people, all they need is some time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they got too much time on mm -hmm. their hand, guess what? They're bound to get in trouble. They're going to do something. Uh, uh, at, at, at 14, 15, 16, how do you expect them to make A good decisions decision. and sound decisions? Mm -hmm. That's few far in between. Yeah. We have to be there to guide them. And it's not easy to guide mm -hmm. young men and women, uh, you know, that don't see mm -hmm. the things that you have saw and don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So they might not change today, mm -hmm. but guess what? If you hang, hang in, in there, there I them. promise you will yeah. have some testimony mm -hmm. and some stories of some lives that you say. That's but cool. being an educator in itself is, is, is special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a special thing. So. You know, you, you touched on that. You touched on that. So tell us a little bit more about your family and, and how do you incorporate your family into this business that you're in? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, family is everything for me. And, and, um, I have been kind of like preparing for this moment. Like, all, you know, I've had some practice of pouring into other kids. Mm -hmm. Seeing some of my mentors have kids. Because I've I coached. I've been, you know, I've been working with kids all my life. Mm -hmm. So now I'm a big kid. So right. when I'm playing, when I'm with them, I'm in my element. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see the real Joe Holmes? Put me in, put me around a bunch of kids and we're just going to have fun. Yeah. Right. Right. That's, that, that's just it. And so my boys, my wife, and now the little girl, well, y'all pray for her because she yeah. is going to be, she's going to be out there doing ladder drills. She's going to be catching a football at two. Yeah. And she's going to be doing a little bit of everything. And 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 um, definitely the simple thing is, and she's going to be spoiled to death. <laughs> she's already spoiled. This little right. girl don't want to be put down for nothing. She's <laughs> crying right now because yeah. she wants somebody to pick her up. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about how you met your beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. So me and my wife, Lolita, I met her through... I've been knowing her for a while. She was just, we were just friends. Mm -hmm. And the strange thing about this, we never saw this coming. We, yeah. She was just a genuine person that wanted to just, uh, wanted to help. Right. Um, support, because I had my nephew, uh, pretty much had custody of my nephew for a while. So uh -huh. I was a dad. I, I was a dad during that time uh -huh. with him. So she would just come over and, hey, I want to help Joe, because his name is Joseph also. I want to help little Joe do his homework. But whatever support you needed, she was pretty much there. Wow. And we were just friends. Like, we never, never <laughs> saw this thing. I love it. Yeah, that's what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> she saw it. She <laughs> saw it. Making. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and so through, and I know Sarah Jenkins, she always takes credit. Pastor Jenkins' daughter. Sarah right. Jenkins is, I used to train her with basketball. Right. Um, back from Riverdale to Georgetown to Maryland, stuff like that. So Sarah right. Jenkins, I'm giving you a shout out. She takes full credit for linking us together. Lucy. Awesome. Yeah, she, hey, listen, don't let her, you let her tell it. She, right. takes, she takes full responsibility. Yeah, but <laughs> well, she, she, she didn't go wrong with that. She, right. did, she didn't go wrong at all. And um she lolita is truly a blessing um marriage ain't easy but we in this for life that's right. yeah that, that's it i love her she she's awesome she is awesome. and she has the same heart for kids she has the same passion yes yes yeah, yeah. i'm talking about she i can i can she's an all-purpose person like uh, she's a resource center. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Well, just in case you didn't know, I'm revealing it today on this show. You were set up <laughs> between Sarah and and, and your <laughs> wife Lolita. You were set up. <laughs> you know they say they say us men, right. us men, we have this idea of the woman we want to marry, or whatever the case may be. When a woman's looking, even when she's playing as a little girl, <laughs> she's always marrying a silhouette. Mm -hmm. There's no face to it, right? But so when she finds the man, right, and she see that man, and she can see him that's in that little Bobby doll that she was playing silhouette. with. That's it. So <laughs> you, you, you were silhouetted and didn't even know it. <laughs> long before. And then, but I right. thank God for that because yeah. because a lot of people don't wait. A lot of people don't find the good thing. Mm -hmm. And when when I say that, men. Listen up, all across the world. <laughs> the Bible says a man that finds a wife is a good thing. Yeah. But then you believe, based upon what it says, that God was hiding it from you. <laughs> he wasn't hiding it from you. He was hiding it for you. Right. And so when you see God's heart, right. then it says a man that finds a wife, the one that I set out for him, the one that I set up and hid for him, he finds a good thing. <laughs> and listen, that one's for free. Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's for free. Amen to that. Yeah. Don't don't you guys rush because you know because 
uh, you know, if, if she don't have the same heart that you got, you will not continue on in your passions. Correct. Right. You, yeah. you will definitely not continue on your passion. I've seen it many times mm -hmm. over the years. But the reason why I know you guys work is because I've been hands on mm -hmm. at, 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 at the at book a, at bag the giveaways yeah. and the events um, that, that we have. I was so blown away when we did the first one over in the park. That was great before COVID, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but then, you know, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about where COVID set you at. So with COVID, <coughs> I, you know, first thing is always safety. Um, but I'm also still battling these kids still need support. Um, and so last year we were, you know, even though the kids were home, we were just like, hey, these kids still need supplies at home. Mm -hmm. So God put on my heart to, there's still a way that you can still connect with these kids. Yeah, yeah. And so I know from experience, like my boys need composition books. Yeah. Like Jackson in kindergarten, he needs about, he needs like four. Like he needs like pencils. He needs pencil sharpeners. Yeah, he needs all of that stuff at home. So I'm looking at my own experience. It's like, hold up. We, these kids still need this stuff. Yes. So we need to find a way to still supply these resources to these kids out in the community. Um, even though COVID is still, you know, a lot, we wanted to safely get supplies and stuff to these children. Mm -hmm. Man, that's great. Listen, we're going to take another commercial and we're going right to be right back. Listen, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, so Mr. Holmes. We, we were talking about COVID back before the commercial, uh -huh. but I don't think we've actually really given the watching audience and the listening audience a real nutshell on what the General's Future Charity does. So let's go back and, and, and fill them in on that. Yeah. Okay. So our mission, the General's Future Charity, our mission is to support, serve, and supply resources to families in underserved communities through mentoring, enrichment programs, and hosting community events. So that's pretty much from A to Z. We like to, we have four events that we annually do. So we try to make sure we do a health, health and wellness day um, for the community where we have creative health group. They do blood pressure checks. Um, you know, all the, you know, because a lot of people in the Sea Pleasant community Mm -hmm. Don't have health insurance. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to bring um, we try to bring those resources to the community. Obviously, our Super Bowl is the community day event. Uh -huh. Th this has been something that I've been wanting to do since I was a kid. Wow. Goodwin Park. I spent all my time there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why anything that I do, Goodwin Park is always my first option. Yeah, right. I spent all of my time. I love it. All of my time there, and so um, yeah, and so from there, we would do our harvest fest. Mm -hmm. We do a harvest fest, um, and then at the end of the year, we do our coat drive. Mm -hmm. Make sure the kids get coats, hats, gloves for the winter time. Awesome! Wow, that and is you awesome. and you were raised in Seat Pleasant. Yes. My parents still live in the same house that I was raised in. Right, right off 69th Street. So they, they, they're still there. Awesome. They're still awesome. there. And so um, yeah. my parents, my dad was James Evans. He was, <laughs> he was, that, he, he was that dad. He, yes, he was, was that dad. <laughs> he was that dad. 
He made sure we had everything we needed. Yep. He was firm. Yep. Uh, showed us love. But you're going to listen and you're going to be respectful in this house. <laughs> or, or you can get him out of here. <laughs> and so my mom, both of them, prayer warriors. Yeah. Oh, man. They, and I didn't understand mm -hmm. that because I couldn't do what everybody else in the neighborhood did. Mm -hmm. When street lights came on, Joe had to be in the house. Right. Be in that house. <laughs> I had to be in the house. Yeah. But, you know, I had to deal with everybody, Joe, and, oh, Joe got to get the street lights on, Joe got to go in the house. <laughs> I'm looking in the I'm looking out the window. Everybody's still playing. Yeah. But they knew when the street lights came on in C Pleasant. Yeah. It's anything goes out there. A whole it's different down day. Addison Road. It's everything going now outside. So yeah. they had a plan, and God was working through them. Absolutely. To get to me, um, to really be able to keep me from all of that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And then for you to come back into the community. Yeah. And, and be such a leader in the community, you could not be out there, you no. know, doing what everyone yeah. else was doing. And it's totally amazing. We don't understand as young mm -hmm. young men. Don't understand. Uh, my mother was the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, it was eight of us. When the lights came on, you didn't have no option. <laughs> you was you was in that house. There was no option. And the good thing about it, I think about it sometimes because the people that I envy mm -hmm. that was able to hang out late, do what they want. I went to quite a few of their funerals. Stuff have uh, because they didn't have the discipline that I had. And I thought it was the worst thing in the world. I thought my mama meant me harm. <laughs> Man, I, I just know she was trying to keep me from something good. <laughs> right. And then, just trying to keep me alive. Keep you alive. Right. So we, we as parents got to really, really, sometimes we can't just give in because we our feelings get touchy and we want to let our kids do everything. Discipline. Yeah. Is what our kids needs the most Absolutely. in life. Yeah. You know, that's that, some type of stability. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And some type of stability. Mm -hmm. Now, now, COVID hit. Now we're gonna put it up on the screen because we got an event coming up here soon mm -hmm. on August the 14th. 14th. Right? Yes. August the 14th at Goodwin Park in C Pleasant, Maryland. We will host our fifth annual community day event. Now, for those that have came to the previous events, it's gonna be a little different. Right. Um, because due to COVID, we want to keep everybody safe, but we still want to pour into the kids um, and be able to get these school supplies um, and backpacks to them. So we have a great day plan. We have an obstacle course that the kids will be able to participate in because I know if you know me, any kid around me or any adult, anyone, if you're yeah. around me, we're going to exercise. Right. We're going to do something active. Exactly. Yeah. So oh. that's why I don't hang around you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna walk, we're gonna do something. Whatever that level is, yeah. we're gonna do it and we're gonna try to push a little further and go from there. So I have a great group called Apple Scrapple Kid Fitness. I don't know if y'all remember on the fourth annual, they were on the field. They had the obstacle course going on. Right. Okay. Um so they do a great job. They're out of Laurel. Uh, they do field experiences for kids. So I met them um, through social media. They were just donating and stuff like that. So I'm like, what is that? So I looked at their information. Um, and so they were awesome. So we built a relationship. Yeah. So shout out to Apple Scrabble Kid Fitness. So they're going to have an obstacle course set up. You know, we're going to be COVID safe, so each individual kid will be able to participate okay. and go through the obstacle course. Um, and I want men, not just, not saying anything about the women, I don't want to be sexist with this. But it's a big deal, I think, it for is. men to surround this obstacle course yes. and celebrate each individual, each individual kid mm -hmm. as they're running through. Wow. I don't know how fast they run. Mm -hmm. We just want to celebrate them starting something and, and finish. finishing. <laughs> Whether they run it yeah. or walk it. I love it. That, that is so, that's so awesome and I amazing. And, and just so you guys know, we, we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we believe in principle things. So we're not being negative or condescending. Not we believe all. from the foundation of the earth, men play an important, important part, part in young people's life, Absolutely. just as women do. Mm -hmm. Women are nurturers, but men mm -hmm. allow, men give young men affirmation. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Yep, you know, and, and we need more of that, whether you guys know it or not, whether you admit it or not, this world is going crazy because we don't have men giving young men the affirmation the back. that they need. And, and it's great that yeah. you women are doing it. It's great that you're stepping up and doing your thing. But listen, don't get so caught up in the hype that you forget <laughs> the word of God and that you forget the principles in which we mm-hmm. were raised in. So we don't apologize in no manner. We're not Absolutely. sexist. We're not, not anything. Matter of fact, if I was sick, my wife would have bopped me upside my head seven. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate for y'all to see that happen. Right, right. <laughs> right. Uh, so we're we in no way sexist. But that's, no it, that's important. Men, come yeah. out and support. The information right. is right there on the screen. Listen, also, also, while all the book bags and stuff are being collected, packed, and everything, mm-hmm. you think because you get to the 14th and it's over. No, we've been doing it for four years. Five years. Fifth year. This, this, this is the fifth year. year. So every donation that you make, yeah, every donation that you make launches it's, it's it into the next future. So mm-hmm. you guys that are in 175 countries, you want to do something good, convert that money to American money and send <laughs> it right there. You see it at the bottom of the screen. Yes. Future charities. General's future General's general. general future, yeah. yeah, general future charities. <laughs> Go ahead and send that money. Empty your pockets, man. Right, right. <laughs> And if I could share, if I could share a little bit more about the event. Yes. So, so we're gonna have the obstacle course set up. So the obstacle course finish line is gonna lead us to the basketball court. You know, right where you guys were, had your tent, had your tent yes. last year. Okay. So we're gonna have two people there with hand sanitizer um, to keep, the, you know, clean the kids' hands. Yes. From there, they go into a hydration station where we're gonna have waters, Gatorades. I ain't really big on this sugar, but Capri Suns and, <laughs> and all that. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a be obedient and allow them to have some sugar. But mostly, I just want them to have water, water, water. Water, so, water, water. water, water. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, we're going to have, so they're going to be able to go to the hydration station. Then they're going to take about five more steps. The next station is going to be snack station. So we're going to have some prepackaged snacks already on the table. Um, so it's gonna be like some chips, some fruit snacks, the kid stuff, granola bar. And you know, it's already gonna be packaged, sealed up. Um, and so from there, we're gonna move forward to the backpacks. Mm. Okay. And so from there, after that, we're not telling you to go home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but we want to keep you safe. Yes, yes. keep moving. We, we want to keep you safe. And so we just want to wish you well. Uh, I want to give all the kids like our email address just yeah. in case they got any basketball games or they want to send me their report cards or something right. like that. So I just want to build that relationship with these kids so they can follow us on social media. Right. Uh, just building that connection. Right. Wow. Just building that connection. So I'm going to have some sponsors out there, but with COVID, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, some of my sponsors that agreed to be in person, they're realizing like, Hey Joe, we still gonna support, but we may not be in person. Yeah. Right. And so we we're gonna have a registration for people to register for backpacks. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can try to have people coming at certain times from that 12 to 3. So we're not getting that line because that line can start from Goodwin Park and go down yeah. Ash Road. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Y'all have seen that line. <laughs> Yes. You know, I haven't seen that line. And so we want to just keep it safe and kind of have people coming. Yeah. Approximately about 30 people coming every 15 minutes. Okay. So from 12 to 12, 15, probably having 30 people come. 12, 15, okay. 12, 30, another 30. I know that's wishful thinking, but at least I got it in place. But I know I know our people. <laughs> I know our people. <laughs> you have a plan. Yeah, listen, we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to be, we'll be right, right back. back. Life can be hectic and sometimes overwhelming, but I know that my loved ones need me, the best version of me. That's why it's important for me to take time to sit with my thoughts and clear my mind. Because before I can care for anyone else, I have to care for myself. Self-care is essential. Welcome back. Hey, listen, all the information is there. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and register for your time slot Mm -hmm. up there. It's written on the screen. You can register for your time slot. 
you can donate. Yeah. You can check out what the general services do, mm -hmm. and you can be a part of it. Mm -hmm. But listen, I got to do our service announcement real quick here. Our service announcement. Our, our service announcement. Joe was talking about uh, Capri Suns and stuff like that that they have out there uh -huh. on, on the table. That sugar stuff that's not good for you. <laughs> but not one parent, not one parent. Thank you, Dr. Staten. I'm getting ready to use your stuff. Not one parent flip over the box <laughs> to see what's in it. They give it to the kid and allow them to drink it, but they will not go vaccinate their children. Mm. If your child is of age, listen, I'm, I'm telling you, this new strand is not yes. joking and it's taking out our young people. COVID is Don't real. let your hesitation mess up the life of your children. Yes. Amen. Vaccinated. If it's not for you, child vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get your child vaccinated. I'm trying to tell you, we believe in God, and God will take care of us. He has been taking care of us all, all this time. this time. We're still here. And we're still here. Yes. Amen. We got vaccinated, though. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're done with your commercial? Yes. That, okay, that, that was a different commercial. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was just sliding. All right, so with the, the COVID and, and the, the adjustments that we all, I mean, COVID touched everybody in the entire world. So we all had to make adjustments. So with um, the General's Future Charity, did that mobilize you to begin to offer different services or are you just focused? Are you focused on the book back, on the school supplies and the, the tutoring and things like that. Coke giveaway. Coke giveaway. So, yes, we are still, even though COVID um, did hit with that, we were still able to get coats to kids. Uh, we just didn't have the event. And if you would notice, like for me, um, I really don't like to highlight those moments that we really pour into the kids. It's like if you, you will never catch me giving a kid a, a coat. You, you, you'll never catch me doing the stuff that we do behind closed doors. Yeah. Like it, it's kids that come to schools right. that only have one uniform. Yeah. So they're in the classroom smelling and everybody's kind of joning on them and stuff like that. Right. But these guiding counselors let me know that or let the general future know that. We'll go take laundry detergent. Yeah. We'll go get uniforms. Mm -hmm. We'll right. go... To just, you know, so you'll never see those type of things behind closed doors That's of true. what we really do. Yeah. Uh, food, feeding people. Like, you'll never, you know. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I know we need to do those things for, you know, sponsorship because some people, hey, I want to know what you're doing with this money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got to, you know, do as much as needed just to know that people are. No, we're doing the right thing with the money. We, we're, we're pouring it back into the community. Exactly. Uh, but them, them stuff like that, mm -hmm. you won't see those. You won't see that real grind behind the scenes right. of what we do. Mm -hmm. And that, that's great. And that's the way that's it should great. Be. You don't publicize. You don't put that's people it. on blast. Young mm -hmm. people receiving coats. Everybody in the neighborhood see them. Oh, that's where you got your coat no. from. Right. You don't do it for that. And exactly. I'm going to tell you without a shadow of a doubt, um, I know the man that's behind these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are full of integrity. Exactly. I tell you what, you ain't ever got to worry about where the money's going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have integrity. They have yeah. people that speak into their life that deal with those and issues hold them that deal and hold them accountable mm -hmm. for what they do. So your money's not wasted. It is good ground. So mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. it. Yes. And it never pushes themselves forward, him and what they're doing. It never push themselves forward which is why it was important to us to do this spotlight so that people can see and, and to, to feel the heart behind what it is that you're doing and to be able to support what you're doing because um, I think the need is great and then the need through throughout COVID is probably greater. So mm -hmm. we want to put it out to the entire world. We're in 175 countries, as my husband said. And we want to put it out to the world so that you can get more support and you can get more you know, contributors, people, more partnerships. You know, right. to go out and do the work because one of the things, one of the the big things that stands out for me about the about COVID and how we all had to adjust our lives is just how important it became to look out for your neighbors. You know, mm -hmm. to check on your family and friends, to share what you have with those who mm -hmm. have far less. Right. I am one hundred percent impressed with how you know your organization 
and other organizations like the Generals and the local churches. You know, Grace Cathedral did and Zion did, First Baptist Church of Martin did, and so many others have risen to the occasion, you know, to be that point that point of reference for families in need during during such a devastating time, you know, a devastating season, and we're and we in about seventeen months now, and mm -hmm. the need is still great. Yeah, it's still, it's still great because yeah. COVID is coming out new variants all the time. Can I touch on that? Well, you touch yeah, on because we are definitely um, expanding our reach. So, just breaking news: we are working on. Um, some developmental programs. So we're going to start a series of just the whole developmental piece um, with basketball, wow. or life skills. So our first thing is going to be the developmental basketball program. Okay. And it's going to consist of fundamental basketball skills, ages five to nine. So right now, boys and girls, ages five to nine. Um, so this is breaking news, John. Yes. Okay. I'll just tell you this. Don't nobody know this. Right here, right here first. Right. right. <laughs> so we're working on um, we're working on that program, and that program is really going to be focused on having fun with the kids. We're going to be teaching leadership skills, building character, uh, how to be a teammate. Mm. You, you, you know what I'm saying? How to be a teammate. Right. We're going to obviously work on basketball, the fundamentals, dribbling, passing, shooting defensive principles and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm really excited because the General Future Charity, we don't have that consistent engagement. So this program right here will allow us to have that, build these relationships. Yes. And we're starting at that young age so we can yes. get that foundation, developing these future leaders. Mm -hmm. So. I see what God is up to. I, yeah. General's future gonna have a building soon. Yes. We're gonna have. I'm yeah. claiming this. We believe we, we, we're gonna have a. You know, I'm a. I work at the Family Life Center at First Baptist Church of Glenarm. Right. I'm not gonna lowball God. He may provide a, a facility like that. Oh, yes, exactly. You know, exactly. We're we're looking to be able to really full time pour into these yeah. kids. And have a resource yes. in a facility yeah, the house, the where, the, where these kids can yeah. come, and we can get it from that young age. Yeah, and we can get them through. Now they're going to be their leaders, and then they even come back and help the next generation. Exactly. And exactly. we're just going to keep on going. So yeah. we get that foundation started early, starting at ages five. It's just like little Yara. She gonna be at two. She can be out there ready. Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the scripture make it plain that he will supply all my needs all of them. to his riches. In other words, you got to have a need first. Yeah, You got to make the need. Don't just come up and say, I want to do this. Make the need before you get a building. Have the children outside so that God can know that they got to get inside. <laughs> you are on it. Don't yes. stop and wait for the big things to happen yeah. for you to do your... It's in the small beginnings. Yes. That the glory of God is revealed mm. in us and in our lives. He just wants to see if you will create the need. You're the stick with of, it. Yeah, if you go, he supplied me according to his riches mm -hmm. and glory. And he rich. He is so rich. <laughs> I mean, to predict everything, the earth is the Lord and, and the fullness of the earth. Right. And they that dwell in it. Everything yeah. is the Lord. So you can listen. I'm excited if you about people that. ain't doing right in your building. <laughs> Don't have God giving you a give giving Joe your building. <laughs> right. Right. It's all right. We, we, we're looking we're looking for some space with some bas a couple basketball courts. Yeah. Some a turf area so the kids can run. We need yes. a couple of classrooms. Yes. Right. So we're five oh one C three. It's tax deductible. Yeah. So, hey, I'm, I'm open for any conversation. I love, yeah. it. I love it. Listen, listen, you can begin to sin. You already and, know what you look, need. For the local people, it, it doesn't do any good if you just run by this channel. You got to like and share. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to YouTube and subscribe, all your friends can see what Joe is doing. Yes. And they can send him money. We're going to keep this before you. Yeah, so all you need to do is like mm -hmm. and subscribe. Mm -hmm. and, and if you share. like and subscribe and mm -hmm. share it, then other people can see what he's doing because somebody ain't know. Somebody's been Somebody walking past know, right? with all that money in their pocket that they wanted to give away, but mm -hmm. they just didn't know what was mm -hmm. going on. Simply because he's a humble man. Simply mm -hmm. because he don't make the noise about what God is doing mm -hmm. with him, only to get his businesses across. So, so I, I, but, but 
Listen, it's we beautiful. we 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 run it down. What what about your beautiful wife? Was she talking about making her appearance? <laughs> right. So yeah. So let me. I'm gonna get them. In a second, but I do want to share one more thing. Let me let me just text. Let me just text them because this is something really important that I want to share with you guys. Okay. Okay. Um. um so I shared with y'all that the general future was formed for after school programs, but I didn't share the transition of how it became C Pleasant. So here's another thing. I had two major neck surgeries. Mm. Wow. I have plates and screws all in my neck. I got from C4 to C7 with fusion in my neck. Wow. Mm. So during my darkest time, I was in my basement. Like this 2015, Jackson was born. So during that time, um, I was out on disability and everything from school. Mm -hmm. 2015. So during this dark time, I'm on Percocets, 800 milligram ibuprofen, and Flexeril. Wow. Oh, all three of those yes. at one time just to function, but I wasn't functioning. I was just, I don't mind to just try to, you know, deal with this pain. Yes. So during that darkest moment, that's when God worked on me and said, go to C+. Plus. That was the plan. Wow. And I'm that. sitting there in pain. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting there like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I, you know, he was just like, I need you to just write. I need you to just write. Write these programs down. Write wow. this stuff down. Yeah. Write this stuff down. Write this stuff down. And I'm like, man, I'm hurting. I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, but I was obedient. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was obedient to just writing down stuff. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I, I didn't know what God was doing, what wow. he was preparing. He sat me down. Uh -huh. He sat me down so I can, he could get my attention. He got yes. away, don't he? Oh, listen. He, he sat me down. Yeah. He definitely sat me down because he knew he had to go above and beyond. Because <laughs> right. I'm going to keep going. So God will put screws in your neck. Bonnie? Yes. <laughs> Right, and so from there, so from there, I never forget. Um, as I'm recovering, mm -hmm. I'm planning. I'm yeah. planning. So I'm reaching out to some of my mentors that I really, you know, look up to, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sharing some of this stuff with them. Mm -hmm. And so I never forget. I, I talked to Pastor Jenkins. Mm -hmm. I told him about what I was planning to do. Yeah. And he was just like, hey, Joe, that, that's a great idea, man. That, that's, that seems a little expensive, but, it, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 it's a great idea. Right. And I told him, God told me not to worry about that, just plan. Yes. Right. He, he looked at me and said, you go ahead. You do that. Amen. And, and from there, we don't have no money, but... All the door, God has been opening up doors. People have been supporting. I've been in 7-Eleven with General's Future shirt on, yeah. and the line is from the front all the way to the back. And I've had somebody behind me say, hey, man, that's good stuff you're doing. I'm looking back, I turn around, I'm like, man, I'm trying to get out of this store. What are you talking about? Right. Hey, man, we standing in this long line. I just went on the website on the back of your shirt. I donated $50 to you. Oh, hey, man. Right. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Dang right. Man. And so during that, I say all I have to say this, during that darkest hour, yeah. like he really sat me down mm -hmm. and said, this is what I want you to do. So that's my motivation of getting up, walking, 5 o'clock in the morning. If you notice, I'm up early. And I really don't want nobody walking with me because right. that's the time when God speaks to me. Come like, on, I need my time. Come on so here. if I know you're trying to walk with me and we're doing it at 6, I'm going to go do something at 5 o'clock so <laughs> I can have that one-on-one -on -one time. Absolutely. So right. I can hear and get direction with my family, with, with everything. So yeah. the people that really know me, they, they know that's my time. Uh, let's leave you alone during that time. Because I, I come back with Vision. Yes. <laughs> I come back with vision. And they'd be like, man, why are you texting me at 6 o'clock in the morning? Man, I need to put it down on paper. Somebody need to hear that. 
Say, ain't you up again? <laughs> right. I'm telling you, God, love God is just so amazing. A couple of years ago, <laughs> yeah, uh, he gave me a message called Nighttime Development. Mm, okay. And I want y'all to know, no film is developing the light. It's That's always right. the dark. But only the camera, the one that took the pictures, knows what the picture is. Mm -hmm. We're in the dark, and God is developing he us is at developing the darkest us. times of our life. Yeah. But when he finished putting us in the development fluid, <coughs> he knows exactly when to put it in the stock. Mm -hmm. So it can stop developing when he hang us there. Mm -mm -mm. The we picture, are beautiful picture that picture he has saw. Exactly how he and saw. because he is the perfect <laughs> photographer, because it. he sees us as we mm -hmm. are, or what he has made us, mm -hmm. listen, I'm telling you, do not despise your nighttime. Exactly. Find time with God. Say, so God, what are you saying? Why yes. are you putting these screws in my neck? You know, this, <laughs> this, this ain't how it's supposed to be. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Why am I on all these drugs, God? Are you really mm -hmm. speaking to me, or is it the Percocet talking to me? Right, you know right, voice, huh? mm -hmm. right. God say, when you know God's voice, no yeah. matter what you've taken, God will give you peace. Mm -hmm. He'll bring it in, and then He will bring it to fruition. So we didn't come here to preach. Yeah, I love it. You though. Get me excited. I, love it though. I, I, I just love what God <laughs> is doing and the yeah. way He does things. I love to hear people's story, how they got yeah. to where they are. And right. The way and, God and, in. And, and so from there, like growing up in C Plus, I had big brothers that poured into me. Mm -hmm. Um and I, you know, I don't want to get the name calling. Because <laughs> you know, I'm a miss, I'm a miss some folks. Right. But it's some really special people that poured into me yeah. throughout my whole life. And I've been waiting on the platform to say, I say thank you to them all the time. Yeah. Like, hey, Joe, man, get out of here with that. <laughs> no, I remember these things. Yes, yeah. exactly. I, I remember these things. I was the little kid at I was a little kid at Goodwin Park that wanted to play with the big boys. Right. I always had the good basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, I always had the good basketball. So they wouldn't let me play. Because I had to, you know, you had to earn that time back there. It ain't just right. because you come out there and say you got next. That right. mean you playing. Right. So now Goodwin Park. Man, it was a high-level basketball. Game. It was crazy. Right. So from there, i never forget one of my big brothers, Donald Turner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Donald Turner always saw me. I used to be the little big head boy in C+. I was a little Joe. I was a little Joe. So from there, he was just like, hey, Joe, come on. It's your time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can play. Really? He was like, come on. From there, that boost gave me the confidence to just take off. Yes, right? absolutely. To just really take off. So another one, D'Angelo Butler. He's my moon bounce guy. All right. Big bounce moonwalk rentals. That's it. He has his own business where he is basically doing, you know, he supports us. He donates his services of the big bounce moonwalk rentals. Right. Face painter. Uh, all them tables, tents, chairs. Right. I love That's it. him. He was the big brother of the neighborhood. Wow. I couldn't go out of the neighborhood if mom and pop knew that he was going. That was stacked. Yeah, that's good. I love it. So from there, it was high school. I had great wow. coaches, but Keith Chestnut mm -hmm. was a guy that uh, he, he just stayed. I could never do nothing right. Wow. I could never do nothing right. But he knew how he knew he had to do that for me because that would motivate me right. to never settle. Right. And right. wanted me to keep pushing. Exactly. So he, he knew his personnel. He knew that if I tell Joe he's good right now, mm -hmm. he might get comfortable. Exactly. He might get comfortable, but right. he kept his foot on the pedal. I wrote papers about him in college, about <laughs> just how he motivated me. Love like it. to this day, I may be doing something. He that little person on my shoulder, like right. You know, not you know about it. <laughs> you know about it. Yeah, and so, and all my coaches and stuff like that. But as you can see, the Holmes team is here. I see. Look at all the beautiful people. How y'all doing? The Holmes sleep. Oh, the baby, y'all are sleeping. So yeah, let us sleep. Oh, let us sleep. So we got Joseph Jr. here. Hey, Joe. Here. My lovely wife, Lolita, back there. Hey. 
The one that makes the man. I know, right? I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one that's in charge. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. We, we know. We, it is so good to have all of you join us for this spotlight. Yes. We, we're happy to be here. <laughs> It's, it's, it's one thing to have uh, Joe doing the General's Future Charity, but to know that he has his wife right. and his yeah. sons that work together with him in that, it's amazing. It's amazing. It makes all the difference in the world. So we wanted to make sure we got the three of you as part of this spotlight. We wanted to see Baby Girl, too, but we understand she's asleep. <laughs> yeah, tell her she missed it. She missed her spotlight. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I can move her, but I'm about to leave in a few minutes. So no, 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 they want to give. So maybe you won't give the first time. Don't let that hesitate you. Don't give the first time. <laughs> right. And then you know what they're doing after you research and give. So you can mm -hmm. give 24-7, round the clock, yes. all year long. All year long. You can give. Oh, look at that beauty. <laughs> oh, look at the beauty, Spawn. <laughs> yeah, this is little Yara. You say Yara? Yara. Yeah, Yara Isabel Holmes. Oh, yeah, Isabel. Isabel. Yeah, I have a sister named Isabel. <laughs> My baby sister's name is Isabel. That's a good name. That came from the boys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good job, fellas. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good she good job, little, uh, it's okay, baby girl. You yeah. have a beautiful family. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. <laughs> listen, listen. We want to thank <laughs> Mr. Joe Holmes for this interview. Yes. Listen. It has been wonderful. It is amazing things that he is doing. It, it's something, it is something worth mm -hmm. pouring into. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's giving can just give without hesitation. It, it's, it's important that you do. It's absolutely important. And partnering with um, efforts like this is just as important. You know, however your organization can come alongside the General's Future Charity to help them do this great mission that they're on that they're on is appreciated so we're going to make sure you have contact information you'll be able to go to their website you'll be able to go to their facebook page i think there's an instagram page yes there is an instagram page yeah. we'll have all of that there you can go and you can follow the generalist future charity see all the wonderful things that they're doing in the seat pleasant community do you serve other communities yes we also we're not just you know seat pleasant is our foundation yeah. Right. But we definitely stretch out to this, uh, Glen Arden, Palmer Park, just oh. all the surrounding areas. Right. Yes. We've actually reached out to, I have a cousin in Waukee, Iowa, uh, that we, we send backpacks up there. We've sent yeah. some stuff to Philly. So yeah. we, we're all around the world, North Carolina. That's so wherever the need is, yes. um, so we yeah. are important. Because mm -hmm. I, I have a history of that Midwest. Cause I was I played at University of Nebraska. Okay. Okay. So, so I have that connection out in the Midwest, North Carolina. So like that. We pull wherever the need is. Yes, wonderful. Listen, you have a, a listen, international ministry. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for joining us. We're so excited about this. Mm -hmm. Listen, we will have them back. We will indeed. Mm -hmm. We will continue to follow Joe Holmes and the General's Future Charity until, you know, so. Look forward yeah. to getting him and the family back on again from uh, event to event so we'll know what's going on and how we can continue to support and undergird what it is that you're doing. Awesome. 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 We are closing. <laughs> Joe, we, we're about to close. Listen, can you give us the final words? Yes. Well, so August the 14th, we will have our fifth annual community day event. We would love to have you bring your children out. Um, so we can love on them from a distance, get them some exercise, we can get these backpacks, get some snacks to them, and we just want to encourage them. And, you know, I know it's tough for them being home, um, but we want them to be safe. We, we want to encourage that social distancing. We want to encourage them to still try hard during the school year, even though they're home, 
could potentially be virtual learning again, but I don't know, in the classroom, but we'll see because I don't think anyone, I mean, I know God knows, but Absolutely. I don't know, things are changing every day, whether it's Absolutely. in person or not. But just want to let you know that we want to, we want to make sure you have what you need. Awesome. Great. Once again, thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight, for watching. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Joseph Holmes and the General Future Charity for allowing us to spotlight you tonight. And listen, as we close, our tagline, continue to make this your season to live out your reason. Listen, be authentically you. The question on the table is how will you leave your imprint in the world? Awesome. You all have a wonderful rest of your evening. We'll see you next Monday for another Spotlight. Bye-bye.